you created something super special with that first movie, and I feel like when it comes to the miniseries, and maybe even the book for some people out there, it's always the part with the kids that has that special spark. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, how did you go about creating it with the second movie? Is there anything you and Gary would say that was our break story moment? Um, yeah, it's important to me to generate that, you know, that, that, that engagement with, uh, with, the, with the losers uh, at this period in life. You know, it's a new cast, same characters, but new cast. So for me, part, part of the function of all, all those like uh, flashbacks in the movie is, uh, you know, generating that, uh, the tunnel between the two, the, the, the two timelines of, the, of each character to ease uh, that, you know, emotional connection that mm -hmm. the audience have. Um, they're phenomenal, phenomenal cast, but, you know, the truth is that people know the, the losers from it too, and they're, you know, they love these kids. So, uh, but now they, they will love the adults. Yeah. I certainly already do. <laughs> um, I also wanted to ask about the scene that Stephen King told you to add to it, because if I hear that Stephen King, of all people, added a scene to this movie, that thrills me to no end. So I'm curious, which one was it? That's not true. Is it Unfortunately, not? no. It's a, it's okay. like a broken, you know, like communication. Steve, uh, I love this man, and and he's been so supportive of this. No, I just like share the script with him. And I, because I wanted to know, you know, what he thought about it, his, you know, he has any kind of note. And he very, you know, very, very generously said, look, this is not, don't take, just take this as, as what it is. It's not a mandate or anything, but this is like the, the couple of things that I would like to see in the movie. <laughs> and, uh, and that's, that's what it was. Can you share any particular notes he gave no. you? No. No? Yes, I, I can. I want to know all of Stephen King's secrets. He wanted to, you know, he, there, there were things that were already on their way to land on the movie. Uh, he, he was, uh, you know, um, he's a fan of Paul Bunyan. And Paul Bunyan, speci specifically Paul Bunyan chasing uh, young Richie. So uh, that was great because, you know, I was a little bit on the, on the, on the fence with that. And when Steve said, and I put it in the movie. And if we, can we see it in the movie? It's like, yes, of course. Um, and the other one was the, the rolling standpipe at the end of, you know, in the book when Derry collapses into the sinkhole and it all floods. There is a scene uh, that, uh, where the standpipe basically collapses and starts rolling down the hill. And that's, <laughs> for some reason, it's one of, the, of Stephen's uh, favorite uh, like episodes in the in the book, and it's funny actually. There's like it's seen like the whole episode is seen by a by a guy that is like you know smoking a spliff and he's looking at and he's like he says something like uh, eat that Steven Spielberg or something like that because of the scope of the scene. Well, we couldn't go that far because I wanted you know I basically wanted to <clears throat> uh, end the movie in a, in a more emotional note, more mm -hmm. intimate, more more about the feelings of of this group of, of characters. And also like making this like huge, uh, you know, destruction scene would have sucked uh, probably half of the budget of visual effects. And I, I didn't go, I didn't wanna go through that. Yeah. Speaking of the visual effects here, you have such a great mixture of visual effects and also practical effects yeah. too. So I'm curious, was there any particular scene in this movie where you were wavering which way to go with a certain scare? I normally go practical until, you know, practical reaches that, you know, that boundary of, of credibility. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I grew up in the 80s, so I have, you know, I have a, a you know, like, I have a, a, a weakness for practical effects, but uh, there's a point where you just have to enhance it with, with digital. And, and, you know, Pennywise is also, I mean, it is a shapeshifter, a shapeshifting creature who inevitably, you know, there is a point where we want to see him, like, do something uh, that cannot be done practical. And, and that's when I, when I open my arms to CG. You know, there's, like, a lot of prejudice with CG. But, it's, like, the truth is that um, CG has reached depending on how, who you work with, uh, how, how sophisticated the design is, you know, how surrealistic it is, as opposed to something that is like, you know, conventional and, 
and familiar to, to the audience. I'm, I'm on the weird side. So the more weird and, and, you know, and, and surrealistic that design is, the more you're basically uh, distracting the audience from the fact that that is a CG. Uh, and really, to be honest, the level of detail and the level of, uh, of accuracy that, the, that these houses are reaching is amazing. Creature-wise, you know, oh, absolutely. we have like a, a level of detail on the close-ups and everything that is like, I mean, I really challenge people to, to say <laughs> that is CG, that is not. Um, of course, you will see impossible things, like in the first movie, like Pennywise, you know, corkscrewing out of the, of the, of the fridge. Mm -hmm. There's no way to say that is CG by looking at the texture and the light and um, the whole rigging, uh, but it's impossible for someone to do it. That's why. That's why some, you know. I'm a firm anyway. believer that anything is possible with Pennywise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>